So today we start with an important subject, which is the theory of distributions. So we will go, this is, this is an introductory lecture on the theory of distributions. The importance the theory of distribution is extremely important in mathematics, in functional analysis, in analysis in particular, because, uh, for instance, we have seen that uh, when we studied PDE, we have seen that sometimes it happens that solutions at some moment are not anymore regular. <coughs> it may happen that uh, they develop say a jump or a jump in the derivative and so on. Once you, and this, is, this is a common phenomenon in nonlinear PDs. So once you have this situation, then you don't know even how to write the PD because you would like to say ut equals say ux or something else, but then ut or ux are not defined at some point. So you don't really know how to, to really to interpret your PD. Hmm? Uh, however, with the theory of distribution, there is, there is a way which uh, very often can be applied and saying that, okay, your PD is not maybe satisfied at each point, but it's satisfied in another sense, hmm? and which, is, which will be the sense of distribution. And so once you have this, then one says that uh, the PD is satisfies in the weak form somehow. And then, so you have a sort of weak solution. Then you have the problem of uh, uniqueness, existence and uniqueness of possible weak solutions. And then you have to prove that maybe your weak solution is bad, but not so bad. So maybe regular in some sense not C1, but almost C1, and so on. So you, this idea is the idea that uh, your PD develop, develops a singularity, and then you have to write down again the PD in another form, and then you have another notion of solution, which is not pointwise. Hence, you have to study existence, uniqueness, and regularity of that new object, okay? This is one of the applications. There are very many other applications. This is just one for PDEs. So um, let us come to the definition. So let omega be an open set. So uh, we have the, the space C infinity C omega endowed with the following following notion of convergence of convergence as follows. So take so now we, we give a notion of convergence of this space. Eh? This is a strange, a strange object, but the definition is the following. So if phi, um, phi let me call uh, L, maybe phi, excuse me, let me use capital N here so that I can use N small n here. So if phi n is a sequence, sorry, this is capital N, dimension of the space, this is an index, small n. I've changed notation a little bit, okay? So if this is a sequence of elements of C, and then you have an element of C, infinity compact support, then we say that, uh, we say that phi n converges to phi in C infinity C if the following two conditions are satisfied. One, there exists a compact set K such that 
the support of the n is contained in k for any n to for any the derivative operator d phi n d phi uniformly in k. So two conditions. Well, uh, you require that the support of all elements of the sequence is contained in a fixed k independent of n. Hmm? Second condition, on that k, yeah, on that compact k, you have uniform convergence of phi and all possible derivatives, first derivative converges to first derivative, second derivative mixed, pure, etc., etc., third derivative, and so on. Okay? All possible <coughs> derivatives. So this is a symbol D that says, for instance, the partial derivative with respect to xi of phi n converges to the partial derivative with respect to xi of phi. Then the second partial derivative with respect to xi, xi xj of phi n converges to the second partial derivative xi xj of phi, the third xi, xj, xk uh, converts to the third, and so on for any possible derivative. <coughs> hmm? Everything now is supported on k, also phi. Hmm? I don't say anything about the topology on this space. I just give you the notion of convergence. I don't want to say anything about the topology, which is quite complicated, inducing this convergence. I don't want to say anything on that. Just we, 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 this is enough for us. Hmm? Uh, modification. Okay, the notation, sorry. The omega is the space C infinity C endowed with such a notion of convergence. Hmm? Endowed with such. So from now on, I will try to use always script D omega instead of C infinity C. If it happens that I use C infinity C, I'm sorry they are the same, okay? What it is important is the notion of convergence on this space. D, D, D. But it is script D. So something like D. Something like this sometimes. Is it required the, the convergence of the function? It's yes, also of the function. For the zero uh, derivative, the, the derivative operator has of order zero is, it, do, it doesn't, uh, I mean, if you take the derivative operator of order zero, then in particular you have that phi n converges to phi uniformly. Hmm? So in this uh, point two, it is also contained the convergence of phi n uniformly to phi. No derivatives. Hmm? Okay. Now, modification. Let omega be an open set. Yes? Yes. Yes.
Ah, uh, no, you're, no. Uh, so the, 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 he is mixing the notation D with this D. I mean, that's why I'm using uh, script D. They are two different objects. This is, this is an operator on phi n. This is a space. So let, uh, indeed, I was trying. So this is a D, but it is script D. I don't know how. In LaTeX, it's, it's very, I mean, D omega. So, uh, OK. Uh, now, other definition. So, another definition is the following. So, I don't rewrite everything, I just modify it. So, let us consider the space of continuous ca function with compact support. Uh, endowed with the notion of following notion of convergence, if I have a sequence of continuous functions with compact support, and I have a continuous functions with com compact support. I say that phi n converges to phi if there exists a compact set such that, so point one doesn't change. Huh? Point one doesn't change. Point two, uh, I simply erase uh, this. Uniformly in K and uh, and uh, let us use maybe the following symbol. No, C C C. Let let us use a standard symbol. So this is uh, we, we this space is C C endowed with such a notion of convergence. Okay, so when I use this symbol, is uh, I mean this. Okay. What I see from here is that uh, maybe sometimes the omega is called the space of test functions. Test functions. Hmm? Now the omega. is contained in CC, omega. In the sense that, uh, of course, as a set is contained here, but also this Im 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 embedding, say, is continuous in the sense that if I have a sequence converging here, then, in particular, it converges here. Uh, so pay attention to this strange arrow. Uh, this means that the inclusion is continuous. Hmm? It is clear, because if something is converging here, then not only functions, but also all derivatives are converging uniformly. In particular, functions are converging uniformly. Okay, so again, I don't say anything about the topology of uh, this space. Okay, definition. So let T be linear. We say that T is a distribution if T is continuous. By continuous now, since now I have only a notion of convergence, but I don't, I don't have a topology, so this means sequentially continuous, namely, if phi h converges to phi, namely if phi h is in the omega, in the omega, 
alpha h converges to phi in the omega, then phi n, phi n, phi n converges to phi n, then phi n converges to Okay. And so this is uh, essentially the dual. Therefore, and we write, we write t. So a distribution is nothing else, a linear continuous functional on D. Namely, is an element of the dual of D. Uh, it would be better to give a topology and so on. We don't do it, but uh, look at this. Uh, the notation uh, reminds, of course, that the dual of D is uh, distribution space. Um, modification. Uh, let T definition let t c c omega into r be linear we say that t is a signed radon sign radon measure with locally local bounded variation oh, a distribution in omega in omega if T is continuous. <coughs> so if T is continuous, what does it mean? As before, if you have a sequence phi n of elements of CC and a continuous function phi with compact support and you have convergence in CC, then you have this. So exactly the same uh, conclusion here this line, but where CC replacing D. Okay? Is this clear? Let me rewrite it. Phi n, an element of CC. Phi, an element of CC. Phi n converges to phi CC. Phi. Okay. So these are the first definitions. Sorry? Radon, yes. Now, um, I have to erase everything because I don't have space. So, I wait, OK. So there is a useful remark, as usual in this uh, linear context. The remark is that T is a distribution, a linear map. So remark. Remark. A linear map. 
is in the prime if and only if uh, t is continuous at, z at zero, just only at zero. What does it mean that if phi n converges to zero in d, then t phi n converges to zero? Okay, so if you want to check that something is a distribution, then this criterion says it is enough to check. First, you look at, at linearity. Of course, your map must, your function must be linea linear. Once you have linearity, it is enough to check continuity at zero, sequential continuity at zero. Hmm? Okay, but the, 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 first, the first theorem that we have is a criterion to, to, to control whether or not a linear map is a distribution which says the following. So T is in the prime if and only if for any K compact there are two constants uh, m capital m depending on k and small m depending on k such that such that t of phi is less than or equal to m and the max on m t phi infinity this for any test. So let, let me uh, read it. So given any compact set, there is one constant mk, which is this one, depending on capital K, depending on the compact set that you are chosen, that you've chosen. Then you have m, an integer number, possibly zero, um, which is this. Now there is a symbol here. This, this is the order of derivative, of the de derivative operator. What does it mean? Well, d phi over dxi as order one. d phi over dxi dxj as order two. d phi over dxi xj, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so this is the order of the operator. So you have, say, I don't know, four derivatives here. You take the infinity norm, the sup norm of this uh, derivative or the operator derivative, OK? Um, theorem one. Theorem two is same kind of criterion, but for CC. So T is in CC prime. So let, let, uh, let T linear. T, uh, T is in the dual of CC if and only if there exists a constant M Uh, sorry, if and only if for any k compact containing omega, 
or any so I have added this eh? compact contained in omega here sorry and m is obviously positive okay so that's for any k compact contained in omega there exists m such that t phi less than or equal that m phi for any phi in the omega and indeed there is something here which is not correct a support of phi is contained in k and support of phi contained in k okay so this is the criterion that you have so this is you see this is sort of saying that for instance for this again the map t somehow is continuous uh, in the sense of uh, what we have seen up to now in previous lectures using the L infinity norm of phi uh, so it's bounded somehow but you have this uh, constant on the support of the test hmm? okay let us prove theorem 1 and maybe uh, a definition also so if in theorem 1 m is independent of k then the distribution t then t is called then t is called of finite order and the order of t is the smallest of such smallest of such m is for any k compact hmm? this is the okay. so uh, I was saying this so which is the, the order is the smallest so remark what is the order so if t is um, So take T um, so I, what I want to say is that the following so if you have a map from D in omega such that this is true huh, then the order of this t would be zero mm? so you have a map such that you have this but here you don't have the max you, you have that m is zero here so you just have the L infinity norm then that is a, a distribution of order zero okay distribution of order zero means something like this where m is zero and therefore here I just have the L infinity norm of phi okay we'll try in the moment we will see examples maybe it is let us try to prove theorem one so proof <coughs> theorem one So assume that condition one holds, assume one, T 
take a sequence phi n converging to 0. Hmm? And you want to show that uh, phi, t phi n, you want to show, want to show t phi n converges to 0. OK, so what does it mean that phi n converges to 0 in D? Uh, this, uh, then, we have that uh, the support of phi n are all contained in some H. So there exists that there exists H compact such that all the support of phi n is contained in H. Hmm? So this is implied by the convergence of phi n to 0 and by the definition of convergence in the omega. So, so that implies in particular that we have this. And therefore, once we have this compact set H, uh, from 1, we can apply 1 with that compact set H. So we, we find corresponding constant from 1 that exists uh, MH and MH uh, corresponding constant to the compact set H. Hmm? Therefore, such that uh, T of phi is less than or equal T of phi n is less than or equal than MH the max of D less than MH D phi n infinity or any n. Okay. Do you agree? Hmm? Is it okay for the moment? So let, let me repeat it. So I assume condition one and I take a sequence phi n converges to zero. I want to show that t is a distribution. Huh? Therefore, using this remark, I have to show that t of phi n converges to 0. So continuity at 0 only. Hmm? So uh, by the convergence of phi n to 0 in D, it follows in particular the first condition is that all supports are contained in a fixed compact set H. So, so take this H, insert H, into condition one, which we have by assumption. So uh, given that h, I can find mh and small mh such that this is true for any phi supported in k. In particular, since all phi n are supported in h, this is true for any n. OK? Is it true? Is it okay? okay. So now uh, we have used only for the first condition of convergence, but we have also the second one. So uh, what, what we have, the second one was saying that uh, all derivatives are converging to zero uniformly. And therefore, now this is fixed, is independent of n. So I cannot increase the order of derivative, and therefore this is going to 0. I repeat it. MH is independent of n. Therefore, for any de derivative operator, this is going to 0. And this implies that T of phi n is going to 0. Hmm? But 
uh, the max by the again using this since phi n converges to zero converges to zero in D and therefore T of phi n zero. Okay. Similar uh, so this this proof just only uh, we have shown for the moment this implication. Similar proof can be given for theorem two, for measures instead. Eh? So I, do, I don't I don't do the proof for measures, but uh, just do the proof. The second part of the proof for distributions. Okay. Uh, maybe a remark, I have raised the, the, before doing the second part, so the, the other implication, so now I need to show this implication left, right. Um, but uh, let me make some, a com and since I have raised this uh, before that, I, before forgetting, I would want to do a comment. So uh, the, the, it was, uh, there was that inequality that uh, for any compact set, Uh, the inequality was that uh, so uh, the supremum of T phi uh, such that um, phi is in C C omega and phi infinity is less than or equal than one and the support of phi this is finite. Okay. So this number here, for people knowing measure theory, uh, should recognize the so-called variation, or maybe total, total variation of the measure t. Oh, okay. You can you don't rec recognize here a measure because usually a measure is defined on sets. So this is another viewpoint of the same thing. If you, we look at measures instead that uh, as, as set functions as elements of a dual of a space. So uh, measures can be, you have two faces of the same thing. The set phase where you measure sets, mu of omega, mu of a, you have some additivity and so on. Or another viewpoint is the functional viewpoint uh, looking at the measure as a, as a linear continuous functional. This is so that there is a sort of relate, there is a big important theorem which relates the two viewpoints. But remember that the, in principle you can look at measures either as set functions or linear continuous functionals on CC in this case. There is a theorem that maybe you, have, you already know, but it doesn't matter. That relates the two. I want only to say that this, this quantity is finite because you have that is, it is less than m for measures. No? Because for measures, you just have uh, this without d. So this number, and then you take the unit ball here. Then, of course, this number is less than m depending on the compact set. So uh, fixed k, you have mk bounding that number there. This is why the word local bounded variation. The word local is, means that your bound 
is finite on any compact set, but in principle is not finite everywhere, just, just finite on compact sets. Huh? Um, so everything, uh, okay, depends on this maybe condition one for which there is a compact set containing all the supports and so on. That strange notion of convergence that we have chosen. So this is maybe called the variation of, uh, of your measure, the total variation of your measure on the compact set K. Why is this important? Well, why is the word local important here? It's crucial. Because for instance, the Lebesgue measure has local finite variation on compact set, but it is not, uh, it's not uh, huh? bounded in the whole space, Rn. Okay. Hmm? You know, everybody knows that if you have a compact set of Rn, the Lebesgue measure is finite, but the Lebesgue measure of the whole Rn is infinite. Hmm? Okay. Now, uh, so let us do the, 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 so assume now that T is in the prime and assume by contradiction that this is not true. Hmm? So I have to contradict this. Let us try to contradict without making mistakes. So there exists a compact, there exists a compact set K such that for any constant m, for any m in n, um, if phi is in the omega, support of phi is contained in k, then T phi is larger than M max D less than M D phi infinity. So that there exists. Okay, so now, we have, uh, so this, this logically goes here, so for any phi, in field there exists phi. We can find the test phi such that we have that thing. So, uh, uh, there exists a compact set such as, so, so now take m equal n, an integer number, and m equal n. Hence, we can, f there exists. Hence, there exists. Wn in the omega support Wn contained in K such that T of Wn is bigger than N max D less than N D Wn infinity. So I have since I have the freedom of choosing uh, capital M and small m, then I choose any integer small, small n. So they are equal, in this case, any integer. Okay. Therefore, I can fix uh, correspondingly for this n and this n, I can fix correspondingly a test function with the support contained in K such that this is true. So here there is N, here there is N, 
and I, in place of phi, uh, um, I have this. So in particular, hmm? so in particular, T of Wn is different from zero. So I, now I normalize it, so I define Vn equal to Wn divided by this number. Hmm? So this is again an element of the omega. And uh, also, which is the advantage of doing this, is that T of Vn is equal to 1. T of Vn is equal to 1. Therefore, surely T of Vn does not converge to 0. Hence, T of Vn as a number does not converge to zero. I just, I have to show what? Um, uh, notice also that the support of Vn is also contained in K for any N in N. So you see, I have a sequence of test functions having all supports contained in a given compact set. Huh? So if I show that, so if I show that Vn converges to zero, then I have a contradiction because T of Vn does not converge to zero. So to, to reach a contradiction, so to reach a contradiction, It is sufficient to show, it is enough to show that Vn converges to zero in the omega. Do you agree with this conclusion? Hmm? Now, now you have to use this, uh, uh, this, this uh, inequality also. So um, from this inequality it follows, sorry, from this inequality it follows that uh, It follows that what about uh, so the, the d of v n d of v n the max the max d less than n d of v n is less than uh, one over n. Hmm? Hmm? Because this is simply by normalization. So, and remember that T of Vn is one. Eh? T of Vn is one. Okay. Well, now if you fix fixing D derivative operator. Of any order, of any order, then uh, d of v n is less than one over n for any n bigger than t. Hmm? Uh, 
which says that uh, Vn converges to zero in D. Hence, hmm? is it okay? So it works. This concludes the proof. So we have a criterion for uh, recognizing whether or not something is a distribution. So remember this criterion will be useful for you also for measures to check whether or not something is a measure with local finite variation, total variation. Okay, examples finally. So I have So let me go in the order. Maybe the most important example, well, there are several, but one basic example is the following. So um, in the order, so example one, uh, one definition more, and then we go to the examples. So definition. Let Tn be a sequence of distributions and T be a distribution. We say that Tn converges to T in, in the prime if pointwise it converges pointwise. Hmm? This is simply pointwise convergence. Okay. So let me go to the example. So example one. So let you be a function in L1 log omega. So you know what does it mean L1 log, right? It means that uh, the integral of the absolute value, that, that u is absolutely integrable, the absolute value of u is finite, if integrated on any compact set. Okay, this everybody knows. And you also know what is convergence in L1 log. Maybe. We don't know what is a topology in L1 log, but we know what is convergence in L1 log, right? What is convergence in L1 log? What does it mean that a sequence of elements un converges to, in L1 log to a function u in L1 log? So different modules of difference, if it integrates any compact set. On any compact set, you integrate. Uh, so again, we give a notion of convergence, but we don't say what is the topology. Doesn't matter. Stay same principle as before. We don't declare what is the topology, but we, for, for us, the convergence is enough. OK? Now, given you, we can consider the following linear map TU canonically associated with U as follows. TU is defined as follows. On a test function phi, this is the Lebesgue integral. So no mystery on this symbol. This is the Lebesgue integral, OK? It is not an abstract symbol meaning duality. It is exactly the Lebesgue integral, OK? Now, this for any phi in the omega. Is this linear? Yes, it is clearly linear. Is this well defined? Yes, why is it well defined? Well defined, well, because this actually is nothing else the integral on the support of phi. Huh? 
and the support of phi is some compact set contained in omega, and u is integrable on all compact sets. Therefore, this is well defined. Hmm? Now, in order to check that this is a distribution, we have to check continuity. What remains is continuity. So, take phi n converging to phi or to zero, doesn't matter, uh, in the omega. We have to check that tu phi n minus tu phi converges to zero. Uh, and this is less than or equal than phi n minus phi dx. Hmm? But what we know is the following, that phi, all supports of phi n are contained in some k, so that phi n and the support of phi is also contained in k, and k is independent of n, and we have uniform convergence on this compact uh, So uh, this, this object here converges uniformly to zero, right? And therefore, this by the theorem on measure theory converges to zero. Hmm? So this example one says that uh, to any function u in L1 log, we can associate a distribution to u, okay. which, which, which has a representation. It's not an abstract linear continuous map, but it is, uh, it is uh, very concrete. It, is, it has this representation. It's an integral. Huh? is a linear integral on u, linear with respect to u. Now, we have, therefore, so this way we have a map, this way we have a map, theta, say, from L1 log into the prime, sending u into tu. Hmm? Why I'm saying this? Because in some sense, I want to embed all L1 log functions inside distributions. So in this way, I want to generalize the notion of function at least L1 log function. So what does it mean that I want to look this set inside this? Well, there are various things that I have to check. First, that this map is injective, so that I really embed injective, injectively, in an injective way, L1 log inside something. Hmm? So if I take Q different from V, it is possible to check that u and v in L1 log omega, then one checks that uh, t of u is different from t of v, uh, sorry, t of v. Because if by contradiction t of u is equal to t of v, so what does it mean? Sorry. 
what does it mean that two distributions are equal? Well, it means that on any point they are equal. Huh? So TU on any point phi is equal to TV on the same point phi. Okay. For any phi. But what is this? What is this? This is the integral of u phi the x. And this because uh, u and v are L1 log, so this is the equal the integral of v phi uh, the x. And therefore we have that for any test phi, the integral over, over omega to u, u minus v times phi is equal to zero. There is a the uh, lemma in measure theory that ensures that then u equal to phi almost everywhere. Uh. So u equal to v almost everywhere. And therefore, uh, this contradicts uh, this. So this map here is injective. Let us see whether also it is let us see whether also it is uh, continuous. So it is a continuous injection. So um, what do I have to prove? So I have to show that uh, if un converges to u in L1 lock, then I have to see whether or not, so uh, is it true that t of un converges to t of u? So what does it mean, this? Remember, convergence in d prime is pointwise convergence. Hmm? Therefore, this means that I have to check that for any test, T u n phi must converge to T u phi for any test. This is what I have to check. Hmm? But then, again, this is equal to the integral of u n phi, the x, and this is equal to the, in since these are L one log functions, dx, okay? But again, now, this is the same. You see, if you take the difference of this, phi has compact support, so the difference is the integration on the support of phi, of un minus u, support of phi is compact, un is converging L1 log, so on that compact, that integral is going to zero. Is this clear? Just a very easy, eh? Therefore, we have a map sending, embedding injectively this continuously inside this. Now, one would like to find, so in some sense, we can, now there is a new viewpoint of functions. Functions of this sort, at least, and one log, so a very big space of functions, actually, can be considered inside this. So there is something larger than functions. Well, there is something larger if I prove that there is something outside. So an interesting question is now, is there something here which is not here, right? So that th this can be considered larger. So injecting is not subjective. So this linear map embedding this inside this is not subjective. Why? So in the, you're, you're starting now to understand that we are enlarging the class of objects 
And therefore, also in view of applications to PDEs, we can look for solutions which maybe are not functions but distributions. So this is a leading idea in PDEs. Look for solutions which are not anymore functions but other objects, which solve the PDE in another sense. Okay. Uh, so let us go, therefore, to, to example two. So example two. So let x be a point in omega and consider the following object. defined as follows. For any phi. Hmm? So this is called the Dirac delta at the point x. is called the Dirac delta at a point x. Let us see whether or not this is a distribution. Hmm? Then delta x is in the prime. OK. Linearity is immediate phi plus psi equal phi plus psi at x equal phi of x plus psi of x. We have to check continuity. Uh, we have to check that if phi n, say phi n converges to phi in the omega, then, that, then phi n of x converges to phi x. Huh? We have to check to check that if phi n converges to phi in the omega, then huh? well, this is again very easy. Do you see it? Is, in, is immediate because if phi n converges to phi in the omega, then there is a compact set containing all the supports where phi n converges to phi uniformly. You don't need derivatives here. Uh, you just need the convergence in CC to have this assertion. Indeed, indeed this is a, a measure. But anyway, uh, if phi n converges to phi, then there is a compact set such that all supports are there and the convergence there is uniform. Okay? Now, there are two possibilities. Either the compact set contains x or it does not <coughs> contain x. Okay? So if the compact set contain, does not contain x, then all phi and x are zero. Phi x is zero, and therefore this is obviously satisfied. If the compact set, on the other hand, contains x, then we have uniform convergence there, in particular pointwise convergence, in particular convergence at this point. Hmm? So I, I have not written anything. Maybe I leave you as an exercise to check homework. Where I am, where I am, I am. Ah. Uh, exercise. So now, now, now the point is that uh, that we want to show, and maybe I leave you as an exercise again. But this is much more interesting. Is that now delta x? So we know it is in the prime. 
Huh? But it is possible to show that it is not in L1 log. This is again home. If it is true, this is very interesting and uh, is the explanation of the famous sentence the Dirac delta is not a function. <laughs> that every physicist says correctly, Dirac delta is not a function. What does it mean? This. Hmm? So if you want to show this, then, well, maybe we do this exercise. But Maybe it would be better to leave you as home. Uh, and then if you are not able to do, let me know. So, uh, but another exercise. Let us consider the sequence. So omega equal r. Consider the sequence uh, uk, un of x sinus of sinus sinus let's say of an x okay so this are this sequence, uh, is this point twice converging? No. This does not converge as point twice. Oh, we have already seen that L1 log convergence implies convergence in the sense of distributions, right? Because the function, the map, linear map theta was continuous. Mm -hmm. Now, instead of having L1 log convergence, we show that, okay, so L1 log implies uh, convergence in the sense of distribution. On the other hand, this does not converge pointwise, but let, let us see whether or not it converges to something in the sense of distributions. So these are functions in L1 log, obviously. Huh? So uh, any, any, any of that function is a distribution by integration and therefore the point is is it true that this converging converges to something in the sense of distributions so the claim is that this converges so even if you don't have pointwise convergence then you have uh, still convergence in the sense of distributions hmm? Do you agree with this? Do you agree with this or? Ah, another homework is that ord delta x is equal to zero. Hmm? Now, uh, do, you, uh, do you agree with this? Why? Because there is a theorem for analysis. <laughs> no, no, no. Lagrange theorem or Salman theorem? Do you really, do you really need to invoke Fourier analysis for this? So let us try to do it elementarily. So what do we have to do? This convergence in the prime, in the prime means pointwise convergence. OK, so we have to check that so let us consider any test function phi and then let us consider this so what is this well this is an l1 log function therefore we know that this is represented by the bag integral okay u n phi dx therefore more concretely this is just uh, sinus of nx phi x dx. Hmm? 
And now we would like to show that this as n goes to infinity converges to sort of mean value of this sinus function. So it converges to zero, say. I think you, need to, you have to just uh, to say, no, OK, first you know that phi are compassable. Yes, you know that, oh, if you want, this is correct. Correct. Yeah, say this is an integral of an, on an interval a, b. OK, then make integration by parts. What happens if I make integration by parts? Huh? So if I make integration by parts, I look this as a derivative. So maybe there is a minus here. So this is the derivative of the cosine. So the cosine, no, there is, okay, derivative. So there is a cosine 1 over n cosine of nx phi prime of x dx. Something like this. Hmm? Okay. Well, hmm? There is, there is no boundary term here. The point is that there is no boundary term because phi is compactly support. So if you want, I can write everything in a big interval outside the, where, where outside of which phi is zero. So the, 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 the trick is exactly that, that there are no inter boundary contributions. So, so let me write again here this, so some k, so some uh, some compact set, K containing the support. So K is any compact set. Say K is compact, is the support, essentially. K contains the support of hmm? Well, now this is, this is, this is all, because uh, there are various ways to, to look at this convergence. But now, you see. Uh, this is in absolute value always less than or equal than 1. This is bounded in absolute value because phi is compactly uh, is a test function. So this is finite less than 1. This is finite by a constant, bounded by a constant. Then what remains is, say, if you want, is the length of k. But the length of k is finite because k is compact m dividing by n. So, this is, so therefore, this clearly goes to zero. So maybe home, I add you an exercise. Try to see what happens if you change u n x into k into n sinus of n x, or also u n of x into n to some power, big power. Uh, uh, alpha sin of x, where alpha is in x. Try to see whether or not still we have the, all these functions are in L1 lock. Therefore, we can ask exactly the same question. Is it true or not that the, the that functions considered as a distribution, therefore the t, the associated t, converges to zero in the sense of distributions, OK? Um, another home work. Ah, let us see another example of distribution. Uh, So uh, let uh, x in omega and let alpha be a multi index, multi index. And then consider the following uh, object here. F 
phi is in the omega. Okay. Well, then, show that this is, so for instance, in one dimension, in, for instance, if, n, in, if in one dimension, uh, if alpha is equal, say, 1, just one index only, this would be uh, the following quantity, minus phi prime of x. Here. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is not the Dirac delta because the Dirac delta was phi of x with the plus. So this is another object, but still it is a distribution. So home, uh, home, delta x alpha is a, is a distribution of order alpha. Home, so this is home. Home, so let u be a function in L1 over n such that the integral of u is equal to 1, say u positive. Uh, u in, uh, then try to show. So define UK, U, uh, define UK, so this is capital N, sorry. So define UK X equal K to the N UK X. So you scale with the index K. K here is an index. Eh? small k is not any compact set. So let, let me call it uh, small n, eh? un. And so uh, n is an integer, positive integer. Capital N is the dimension. It is fixed. So you scale it properly. And so uh, try to show that uh, delta the Dirac delta at the origin is equal to the limit of un in the prime of our n. So what The second? This? The second part, u n x is equal to this. I don't understand the question. Okay, the second line. Second line, this one? Yes. Yes, u n x is equal to then the simple term. n to the n, u of n x. So this is, uh, we have to check the following. Say, for instance, uh, 
This is given in order to have the following, uh, in order to have the following normalization. Huh? So, u n x. So, if you integrate on R n, u n x. This is equal to the integral over n. n to the n, maybe to the minus n actually, R n u to the n x. So you do a change of variable, n x equal to y. And so this is equal to n to the n. And then the x is equal n to the minus n dy. So n to the minus y, uh, u of y dy. So this is equal to 1 yet. Professor, I didn't understand the convergence. In the prime. OK, u n is not in the prime. How do you show that this is? Uh, Why don't you say this? I mean, u n is in L1 log. So UN, UN so is. So instead of UN, they have to consider T UN, am I right? Yes, I am. I am. I am um, identifying the things. I mean, once I have an L1 log function, yeah, more precisely, one should write T of UN. But very often, I identify UN with T of UN. <coughs> so I look as, at UN as a distribution, and therefore, this is exactly. Um, Well, I mean, the, the proof of that is exactly as you said. I mean, if you, if you don't understand the statement, is the statement says that this is T of UN to be extremely precise. So you have to show that if you take a test function, then you have uh, the integral of phi of y, and then you have uh, n to the n. And then you have u of nx dx. Therefore, you scale, as before, variables. So you end up simply with phi of y over n. And then you have u of y dy. And then you show that this converges to phi of 0. This is the, I mean, this is the, the meaning of the exercise. So sorry, you are right. Uh, it would be better to write T of u n. When I don't do this, I mean, I identify u with T of u whenever I am in, one, in L1 log. Is it OK?